Ah, use my sponsor code, sellout for 10% off at checkout. I'm not sponsored, I'm just kidding. The only sponsorship I want is from Sour Patch. What's up, YouTube? Where are you? What's going on, guys? Can you see me? Sorry, is it good? Okay, we're good. Okay, we're good. What's up, YouTube? What's going on, guys? Today we're squatting. I got four reds on the squat right now. We're gonna talk about some more advanced cueing in the squat. So this is not stuff you should be focusing on as much as a beginner, although you can listen and kind of have these thoughts passively going through your mind. When you're a beginner, you need the big cues. You need the basic movement foundational cues that you should be utilizing. But some of my more advanced athletes, we're gonna talk about mindset today, and we're gonna talk about bar position on the back, making the bar feel light on your back, how to brace out of the squat rack so you have a solid walkout and rigid torso to start the squat. We're gonna go over a lot. It's Prime Saturday. We got all my athletes in here training. We got all my athletes around the world going today. Kick ass on Saturday. Uh, so I'm gonna show you guys the workout. Took some more pre-workout. Um, I'm at about maybe 650 milligrams of caffeine right now. It's a lot in my system, but I do weigh about 215 pounds. It's probably gonna hit me a little too hard. But the first thing you need to understand, guys, is your mindset in your workouts is huge and how you're feeling is huge for that. Now, I don't believe in abusing caffeine. I only take caffeine about four days a week. I take a few days off, so my tolerance stays a little bit more elevated to it. But one, I think a lot of people actually underdose caffeine. If you look at the research, I believe it shows uh, two to three milligrams per kilogram of body weight uh, is the highest dose you want to take for maximum performance benefits. I might be wrong off the top of my head, so don't quote me on that. I'll fix myself down here if I am. But you want to take this stuff and start warming up on the bar with intent, guys. So we're going to talk about building tension in a second, but I'm going to do my first warm up and then we'll get to that. lost your balance? Yeah, if I ever get a set like that, where it felt really off, I just retake that shit because I want to make this weight my bitch. Like I literally want to make this thing feel light so my mindset for the next set is really aggressive. I don't want to be timid my next set and be worried about that, so I'm going to retake this. Right, I'm going to retake this set. I put on a better song to help me concentrate. Guys, a lot of people talk about uh, adrenal fatigue or mental fatigue or whatever with lifting. I get hyped almost every single top set all the time. I think that stuff's really overrated. I've ran Bulgarian method where you squat, a max squat every single day with variations and stuff. And I would get hyped. I would take hella pre-workout. I would use stimulating music every single set. I never burned out. I got stronger on Bulgarian, like a lot stronger. There's no such thing as adrenal fatigue or, or whatever, at least in the sense of like what your training can do. So I'm a huge proponent on trying to get in a mental state to zone for every single top set. My back offs I treat more methodical, but the top sets, you gotta just get them done. There you go. laughing at me. She loves me though. I'm always laughing at you. <laughs> Alright, who's up next? Mario, let's go. Alright guys, so like I said, we're going to talk about mentality and um, like advanced squatting cues. So they actually go hand in hand. One of the first things I want to talk about today is how to make a squat bar or just any squat feel light on your back. One of the most common issues that my athletes deal with is especially as they get stronger squatting in the fours, the fives, the sixes, uh, or the females, the twos, and the threes, is especially when they're training at higher frequency and higher volume, the bar just feels really heavy on their back. So the way to get around this is both from your mentality and from your uh, positioning and warm-ups on the bar. So what I want you to do, tip number one, is gonna be T-spine mobility, getting proper thoracic extension. I don't want to go into too in detail here, but without proper thoracic extension and actually rotation, you can't get the shoulders into a proper position when you're squatting. And when that torso isn't rigid, the whole thing is going to feel heavy on your back. Imagine, the, the perfect way to put it is imagine squatting out of a rack like this. How would this feel on your back if you're like this? It's going to feel heavy as fuck. So we can kind of take that to a more precise degree. Every bit of extension we can get into the back and rigidity and stuff from those shoulders, like I talked about in my low bar rack position, you're gonna get that bar to feel a lot lighter on your back. So T-spine mobility 
is huge because we got to be able to position ourselves under the bar. Now, once we're actually on the bar, there's a lot of cues we can go over, which I'll touch on here in a second after I do my top set. Now, mentality, the reason why this ties into mentality is if this shit feels heavy on your back, you're not gonna be able to rep this out no matter how strong your legs are. You're gonna go in there mentally defeated and I cannot express how much the mind really negates the body. If you go into a set with your head down, feeling kind of trash and you're just so-so, and you don't feel amped up, you're gonna do poorly. Think back to all your best squat sets of your life, especially if you've been in this for a while. You felt confident, strong, you didn't think about how heavy it was feeling on your back. So one of the best ways to get a good training day is to make this bar feel light. Do a lot of warm up sets, get that T-spine mobility down, and then take these next cues, which I'll talk about in my next set. Uh, once I get under uh, this top set under my, my belt, I'm gonna talk about the cues that can actually help with this. So my homie right here, he's talking up my back, Mario. Uh, I've known this guy since high school. You guys saw him in the last one. He squatted 617 like it was there. A lot of the stuff I'm teaching you guys, I taught this guy. Uh, but he's talking my back right now. That's actually gonna be tip number two. Always talk your back and always wear a cotton t-shirt on your heavy squat day. This is something my girlfriend, she's smiling because she knows this. When you go bare skin, if you're in a tank top or if you go in like a polyester shirt or something a little bit more slippery, this bar is not gonna settle on your back very well. It's gonna move around a lot. A cotton t-shirt, especially once you sweat and get some chalk on there, that bar digs in so much and it actually helps a ton of getting this bar kind of positioned on your back. I used to squat in uh, my douchey little cutoff tees and my stringers and stuff. Man, the sets are so much harder to get your back rigid like that. So I always preach cotton t-shirt with chalk on the back. messed up on I got it set on my back really good but when I walked it out I didn't walk it out stable my head was down too much we're gonna talk about it in a second but still got the top set done I think it was like 520 or something for a triple pretty good all right so we're gonna go over a couple cues that really help me with getting this bar in the perfect position on my back and making it feel lighter and really helping out that mentality when you're actually going through a, a squat set and the bar not feeling heavy the first one is gonna be always to squat the weight out in the stance that you squat your squat. So a lot of people, they go kind of narrow or they go out on one foot or they do things where it's very dissimilar to the actual squat stance. You want to pretend you're doing a little quarter rep to get this bar out of the squat rack. And then from there, that's step number one. The second thing you need to do is position your torso and your ribs in the right spot to create as much tension as you can. So remember the very first time you put this bar on your back, if you walk this out and your torso is a soggy noodle, you're not gonna get out of that position. You're laughing, Kristen's laughing about the soggy noodle comment. We don't want no cup of noodles in your back, guys. We want this shit rigid and tight. And the only way you can do that is to get a good brace under this squat bar and then walk it out from there. So let me show you what I'm talking about. First step, get a proper grip on the bar. I'm gonna take my hand and I'm gonna actually internally rotate it, get my grip set and get this bar low on my hand, kind of similar to how I bench. Now, if you don't have proper shoulder mobility, this is gonna be very hard to do, especially with the thumb around the bar. But over time, you need to work that so you can get proper external rotation in the shoulders. If you don't have that, you're not gonna be able to do this. So I get that internal rotation to get the, palm, the bar deep in my palm. And then from there, I twist the shoulders around my ribs and I'm trying to pack my shoulders similar to how I would do a bench press. From there, I'm gonna dip under the bar with that grip, and I'm gonna extend the fuck out of my back. I have a whole video talking about the rack position, and I'm gonna get my feet set in my squat position. But from there, I'm gonna make sure my ribs are down, so I actually breathe out first. You see how my ribs went from popped out to down? So it's like you gotta keep the back extended while you breathe out to get the ribs down. And then from there, you're gonna breathe in, and then you're gonna squat it out. And just doing that is gonna make the bar feel really light on your back. Now, third tip is gonna be to pull the slack out or push the slack out of the bar onto your back. Just like we would in a deadlift, we don't wanna lock this out and have a bunch of whip hit us with the bar. So what I encourage you guys to do, and you saw Luis do this earlier, he actually almost pre-squatted the bar out before he lifted it out. You're gonna get the back tight, do everything I just said, get in the squat stance, 
Get set, ribs down, breathe in. And you, before you actually interact this, you're kind of pushing into the bar and making sure the bar isn't spinning anymore and that that slacks in good position. And then go. If this bar starts spinning or whipping when you unrack it, it's gonna feel a hell of a lot heavier on your back. Okay, so again, squat the weight out in your squat stance. You're gonna get your ribs down, brace really hard, and get this bar, get the slack out of the bar onto the back first before you lock it out. All right, next tip, look up when you walk the squat out. Now, there's some days you're gonna be focused on technique. Whenever you're uh, walking out the squat, you might look out at the feet, see that they're set right, and that's okay. But especially for your top sets, your heaviest sets, you want the head to be forward. I'm not talking cranked up, I'm talking forward. When you look down, you get this neck in a weird position, and it just shuts off that upper back, and you feel hunched over, and everything feels a lot heavier. It's actually something Johnny Candido uh, said on his story recently, and I realized I've never thought about that, but I've actually intuitively kind of known that. Like, whenever I look down, the weight feels so much heavier on my back compared to when I'm looking up and forward. So take everything I said in the clips before, and then apply a forward gaze for your top sets. Now, what I would do is on my warm-ups, I'm looking down to make sure the feet are set and stuff, but once I'm ready to go, I cock the head up and I go. Slack out on the back, ribs down, big breath, look up. So I have my prime fan Mario going. He was also having a problem keeping his head up. You saw in his uh, warm-up sets, his acclimation set of 583 pounds, I think it was. He had his head down when he unracked it. He said it felt really heavy on his back and he had a lot of trouble walking it out and getting stable and tight. We had him on his next set of 617 pounds, cocked the head up and looked forward. The walkout was so much cleaner. But now this brings me to my next tip. Something he did that I see a lot of guys do is he didn't let the bar settle. So one, we gotta get the slack out of the bar on the back. And then two, we gotta let it settle up top. What Mario did, even though he got the head up on the 617, when he walked it out, he squatted out like this, but he was getting his momentum going backwards and he just went right into it. He didn't squat it out and let the bar settle. It was like he was squatting it out backwards and going back right away. And that caused a ton of instability and made him feel really wonky on his back. What we had him do on his next set was he jumped up a big jump from 617 to 643, I think it was, right? 643 pounds. Not only did he look up, but when he walked it out, he let it settle for a second, and then he took his step back, and it was the cleanest rep we got out of all those. Let it settle. Come on. There we go. Big breath. Oh, yeah! And the USMPL boys just said that was RP sub six, bro. That was sub six. What the fuck was that? Jay! <laughs> the fuck was that, Jay? It was also a lifetime PR. He's never actually had more weight on his back than 617 pounds. So to go from 617 and then feeling 643 on your back, that's a huge jump, even at loads he's using. So it just shows you the smallest things go the longest way with that. I'm gonna do another video on this more in depth. There's even more stuff we can cover, but that's pretty much the, the more advanced cues I wanted to go over with um, getting this weight to feel light on your back and kind of getting your mental game, like your head game down. Now taking all these cues and actually applying it to your lifting is just the, the stepping stone for actually creating that stronger mentality. Once you have this dialed in, you don't wanna be thinking about this. This is just stuff you should automatically do. And I encourage you to actually ingrain it on your warm up sets 
that way when you get to the top sets, and unlike doing it the way we did it with Mario, because he's still learning as we're going, he's still a new, new trainee, if you can believe that. So lifting, you want to actually ingrain this on the warm-ups. When you get to those top sets, guys, you don't want to be thinking. You just want to be going. And it's really important to memorize these movements and these cues, because when you do get to the top set, all you're thinking about is aggression, but controlled stability and getting everything to fire the way it's going to fire, so you get the most consistent and perfect reps. I think the thing that defeats people the most mentally when it comes to powerlifting is they're thinking so much on the bar. And it's important to think, but not when you're going heavy. When you're doing your one rep maxes or your heavy top sets or whatever it may be, you need that mind kind of ingrained, almost like a, an assembly line in a factory where everything's just moving without you thinking about it. You're getting into position without thinking about it and you're just going. Every time I'd hit a huge squat PR and it was a good rep, I wasn't thinking. All the reps that I can think of where I've missed or I've had bad sets or overshot were sets where I was thinking way too much about pain or position or whatever it may be. I can't express how much your lifting goes hand hand in hand with your mentality and vice versa, okay? The lifting, the cues are gonna affect your mentality and your mentality is gonna affect your lifting. It's kind of like a vicious cycle or a, a positive cycle depending on which sides you get down with this stuff. So that's pretty much the video for today, guys. I wanna keep it a little bit quicker. I'm sure it's so long as hell. If you have any comments, leave it down below. Uh, give the video a thumbs up and share the video. It really helps out. And until next time, I'm gonna see you guys later.